Good morning, my name is Carol Rosen. In 1974, after being a sixth grade school teacher, I was introduced to the late Dr. Werner von Braun in the U.S., the father of rocketry. In my first meeting with him during that first three and a half hours, he said to me, Carol, you will stop the weaponization of space. And I said, uh, you know, teachers don't stop until June. He said, no, you have to understand, this is February, and we have to prevent the weaponization of space because there is a lie being told to everyone that the weaponization of space is now first being based upon the evil empire, the Russians. There are many enemies, he said, against whom we're going to build this space-based weapon system. The first of whom was the Russians, which was existing at that time. Then there would be terrorists. Then there would be third world countries, now we call them rogue nations or nations of concern. Then there would be asteroids. And then he would repeat to me over and over, and the last card, the last card, the last card would be the extraterrestrial threat. Well, at the time, I kind of laughed when he said asteroids, and when he said extraterrestrials, I knew I wasn't going to deal with that subject. And now we hear on the news just today, this week, that they've slid in another enemy. Only this time we're going to protect our satellites. In other words, we have to have some reason to spend these trillions to waste these dollars on a space-based weapon system, and they're all lies. There are, is no threat. And I've been waiting until this day for 27 years, and I'm expecting the spin to happen because he also explained to me that in the, as a military strategist, as a person who worked on the MX missile, which I did later, he said, you will find that there is going to be a spin to find some enemy against whom we have to build space-based weapons, and now we should expect the spin because he said part of the formula for the intelligence community is if they might have a weapon, then we have to consider that they do have these weapons. So now they do have these weapons, so now we have to build these weapon systems, and that's the formula, except that it's all based on a lie.
last century, um, physicists made an astounding uh, uh, discovery. And that is what we ordinarily consider an empty space isn't empty at all. Even if you go to the far reaches of outer space, it turns out that rather than emptiness, what we call the vacuum <clears throat> is really a seething cauldron of what we call quantum energy or zero-point energy. Zero-point just simply means that even if you froze the entire universe down to absolute zero, froze out all motion where everything would be as quiet as you could possibly get it, this energy is still there. It was predicted uh, by the mathematics of quantum theory, <clears throat> but the numbers were so large. For example, there's enough energy in the volume of a coffee cup to evaporate the world's oceans. It was thought, well, this must be some kind of artifact of the theory. But as time went on, uh, various predictions in quantum theory um, were verified in the laboratory. Uh, in fact, I think that was the testimony. This is an alien reproduction vehicle, and just to be clear, uh, this means that it is uh, based on advanced anti-gravity and zero-point energy propulsion systems. They are being manufactured by a consortium of companies that include Lockheed Martin, uh, Northrop, uh, SAIC, and other corporations. But this is not a jet internal combustion system at all. It is actually kicked in by a type of electric power source, and it then accesses this ambient zero-point energy field that is uh, responsible for all matter and energy existing and uh, by special configurations and, and what have you, it causes a, a, a cancellation of mass inertia and an anti-gravity effect. This was called the flux liner. This is probably the strangest one you've shown me yet. This actually flies? It actually flies on the principles of high voltage electrical charges. Alicia Davis had described being escorted into the engine room and seeing the propulsion system components. And it involved a central column that was made of a transparent glass-like material. And she said there was a silvery fluid that was spiraling upward in this, in the, at the bottom of this column. Down in kind of this well that was in the center of the spacecraft was this little tiny flywheel-like mechanism spinning, which matched the ARB also. And this is at a point when this young lady had never seen any of the drawings that I'd done of what the ARB was structured like. I was just you know, talking about propulsion components in general. But then she said that when you looked across this little uh, well, in this lowered floor area in the center of the room was like a garden rail around and she stood there. So you could look across and she said it looked like that below the deck she was standing on was this glass-like material with these coils of wire going through it. And they were spaced out in the same proportions as the ones on the ARB. The thing that she said that was most significant was that the column itself was rotating in one direction and the flywheel was opposite, spinning in the opposite direction. So there was counter-rotation which is something that's often been reported in UFO sightings. You see components on the craft that are spinning in opposite directions. Um, I believe that what happens is that uh, this vehicle develops probably several million volts of voltage. And the, the sheer uh, uh, power of the electrostatic field that is created in this capacitor array actually has the ability to polarize uh, the surrounding space-time. Um, and it polarizes the, the so-called zero-point energy that is embedded in the space-time. So it creates kind of a positive and a negative aspect to the, the status of that zero-point energy. You know, it's, it's, I find it really remarkable that there's so much similarity between the two objects. Mm -hmm. And when that when is that patent from? Yeah, uh, May 30th, 1967. There is no threat, and I've been waiting until this day for 27 years, and I'm expecting the spin to happen because he also explained to me.